And you talk about fire activity, um, that day we had the perfect storm. We had uh, dry fuel, we had high temperatures, and we had a very strong wind. Ashland has a grass fire up by the water treatment plant, Glendower and Oxford, and it's, it's gonna go quickly, and we're getting inundated with calls. It was a losing battle, 100%. All these houses are gone. Any way you cut it, it was a losing battle. There just was not enough water and not enough people to fight these fires. I've got the trailer park involved in Lumen. I need some resources. Copy that. 55, be advised. We have no resources except what I sent you earlier. The fire behavior is completely different from what we've been seeing. Um, they're burning hotter, faster. They're so erratic with the winds. If you look at this one, I mean, it went north and then go west, go east, and it just kind of kind of spread. The Almeida fire erupted into a fast-moving blaze north of Ashland, Oregon in late morning of September 8th. Historic red flag winds were predicted that day, which pushed the fire north along Interstate 5, consuming over 3,200 acres. Oregon's resources were stretched thin, battling over 10 large fires throughout the state. We were informed that there would be no resources available to us should we have a major event. So we knew coming into this incident that we weren't going to be able to get much help. Jackson County Fire District 5 and the Ashland Fire Department were the first units to respond. Within minutes, a second alarm was called, pulling limited resources throughout Southern Oregon and the Rogue Valley. They numbered around 50 firefighters. So as soon as we got to the station, uh, the other firefighter and myself jumped in the engine. Um, at that point, they announced on the radio that they had about five houses that were involved on fire. So we knew instantly it was going to be running quick. We notified command that we were responding, and they sent us uh, right away next to I-5 to exit 19. 701. Yeah, or, oh, there's a car on fire. Oh, there's a car yeah, on fire. Pull in here, stay in the middle. Don't go down there. Yeah. You see Aaron? We had a car fire at the gas station. Okay. Hit the car fire, kind of took some of the heat out of it. And then the next thing we knew, the, the whole field was going in like, just off the races. There was no like stopping it. While units from District 5 battled the flames south of exit 19, spot fires began to burn to the north, threatening the Bear Creek Mobile Home Park. 8311, we're on the south side of Low Road, the trailer park. We have multiple trailers fully involved. We have trees torching this side. It came on the radio that a trailer park um, just down the road was starting to have fire impinge on it. When we get into the park and we had a couple trailers going there, we tried to hold it there. Water was an issue, run out of water. Um, just the amount of wind and heat, and the trailers already going, nothing we could do even at that point to, to stop it there. So we just made that decision to move on. We were reassigned down to um, the highway and uh, we were trying to flank the side of the fire from uh, jumping Highway 99. We were quickly overwhelmed in that mission. The wind just, it just moved it so fast, house to house to house, tree to tree, that it was just impossible to catch. It started that day as a grass fire and it quickly progressed through that grass fire area and wildfire area and into a, what we call an urban interface fire. Yep. Now, really, I mean, there's no wildfire in, in the city of Talent. I mean, where that thing was burning was asphalt, driveways, the homes, the fire hydrants. This is burning through a downtown, multiple downtown areas. There's so much black smoke everywhere. You're breathing all that stuff in. It, this, this was structure fire after structure fire after structure fire after structure fire, over and over and over. The video shows basically all the buildings on fire. I think that was kind of the part uh, where it really sunk in. And it was kind of a moment of defeat because you realize the scope of the damage. The Willow Springs Division uh, has four engines working. Uh, we have about five structures fully involved. The fire continued north through the business corridor of Talon. Fire District 5's Chief Hanley took command of the four engines assigned to the Willow Springs Division. Their job was to protect two subdivisions and a retirement community between Autumn Ridge Road and Willow Springs Drive. What's the hose the road here? 
So Autumn Ridge, by the time the fire got to Autumn Ridge, it was just consuming, you know, homes in just a few minutes. Imagine the volume of flame and smoke that was coming across all of this area. This was uh, not smoke uh, plumes and flames are going up in the air. They were being sheeted across. We're thinking, you know, that we can make a big stand. And next thing we knew that that spot fire in Autumn Ridge blew up. It's making a run through there. And about the time I took those few pictures, the wind felt like it was going to kind of settle down a little bit. And then it just, the winds picked back up and everything just went to pieces again. At this point, it's not just only talent burning. Phoenix is burning at this time. Um, and it was probably that same time that I found out that our uh, fire station three was burning. So at that point, we probably had six firefighters for two neighborhoods. Go ahead for task force two. So there's probably 40 to 60 homes in that entire area. Probably over half of the neighborhoods are gone. As the fire continued into Phoenix, crews were reassigned to Talon Avenue. Their objective was to keep the fire burning east of the road. If the fire crossed Talon Avenue, they would lose the rest of the town. I'm told all of Talon Avenue is yours. Don't let it cross the road. And here's what you have for the rest of the night. And that's when uh, I got working with Kurt. So his engine was one of the ones that was working for me. When Talon Avenue really started lighting off, that of course is when the hydrants went dry. We, we don't have enough water resources. Every single building was on fire when we came into the city. It was like, I don't even know, where do we start? And then as soon as you felt like you were making some headway, maybe you'd run out of water and we'd have to refill. And as soon as you'd come back, that structure that you were working on is now gone. And it was kind of this almost head banging against the wall moment where you're like, there's nothing you can do to slow this. I've seen a lot of through my career and not a lot of it has ever really, I wouldn't say bothered me, but it, especially at the time, I can just work through it. I really realized that like, holy, like, guy, we're hearing reports that the, the mall's on fire. We're hearing all this that is making a run through Medford. And my wife's texting me. She's asking if she should evacuate. And so there's just all these things, kind of pressures hitting me. The other thing in the back of my mind is that we were fighting structure fires all day in wildland gear with no air. You know, cancer's a big issue. I breathed so much that all day. I want my family safe. And then at the same time, like, I'm in a job right now that's probably gonna take years off my life that I could be with my family. And it just, I've never had those thoughts before. We all breathed in and, and were consumed by so much nasty carcinogenic smoke. Um, it was really, it was really a tough fight, man. And you're just like, man, I just, did I just seal my state like on one, one event, you know? Did I breathe in enough stuff over the last 24, 36 hours to basically just stamp myself as now I'm gonna have cancer in 10 years from now? Because you know, you, that's what 9-11 was for those guys, right? You know, those guys are still dying every every year. Those guys are dying from, from the work they did at Ground Zero. Yeah. The winds eventually shifted, pushing the Almeda fire back onto itself. In the end, it stretched over 14 miles from its origin in Ashland to where it died south of Medford, an expanse it covered in just under 48 hours. Nearly 3,000 structures were lost. You know, it, it's very overwhelming and it's very surreal when you watch your community burn down. You, your, your brain, you get in your head where you feel like you didn't do anything. You didn't stop anything from burning. And everything, you know, you've been on, we've been on medical calls and a fall victim, maybe, oh, I've been at that person's house for chest pain. We've been to all these places, we've gone to all these businesses and you're looking at them going, what did I do? I did, what did I do? I feel like I've done nothing. Reports that there are at least 96 active large fires in the U.S. 
the biggest, of course, in California, Washington State, and Oregon. We did Where everything we could do to, to stop this thing, and we just couldn't. There's just nothing we could do. Everything was stacked. We've always been told it's a high risk area where it's pounded, pounded is high risk, but we just don't have, we don't have the ability to meet the need if, if something like this happens again. You know, that, that part has to change. We have to get political to a degree and say, this, this is our reality. And we have to put funding kind of where our mouth is. We need, a, we need resources. So I don't believe these fires are going away. Um, they're gonna keep getting bigger. We're gonna keep setting new records. Um, the fire service is always going to push for fire prevention. Um, when it comes down to these large scale incidences, these mega fires or super fires that we've been having, um, resources are the number one key that, uh, that we're going to be able to handle. It, it's, tough to, it's tough to think that this won't ever happen again. Like if you look at the way our weather is and the recoveries of the forests, it really just burned uh, through a, a greenway that had like a bike path and lots of fuel in it and then got into these cities and ripped through these cities. But as far as a huge wildfire, it's still prime. It's still right there to burn.